Hello and welcome to another video from Eridos 12. Yep, you guessed it, I'm him. Anyways, today's video is going to be about many things. One of them should be the current update and the situation regarding the maps. The next would be about what's next regarding the update. And the third should be smithery. Anyways, let's get into the first part. So, I remember that I was supposed to make three maps for the, the update that just got released. One of them was Safe House, which we did make and finish. Second is Hunter's Valley, like I explained in my last video. And the third one is, well, Builder Man's Resort, which I do remember from 2008, the original version of that map. Anyways, what I'm saying is, is that I was slacking off, I shouldn't have been, and I'm going to own up to it, and I apologize if I uh, disappointed anyone. Anyways, let's move on. So now, in this section, we're going to go over what's next. So what's next, there will be two updates I'm going to talk about. The first one involves smithery. Now, if you haven't heard from my tweets on Twitter, I've actually posted a tweet in which shows effects in the editor called Smithery in action. Now, Smithery, like you guessed, is an editor. And in that editor, you can make maps, and you can even make your own custom game modes depending on how it's done. Maybe a variation of a game mode, and then you add certain things to it. And the manifest is automatically generated for that map or mode, and bam, there you have it. You can play it. However, before we get into that, we want to make sure we have everything ready. So yes, there will be a play button that you will be able to press when you're dealing with Smithery. And that play button will actually allow you to see it in action. And before we can do anything, we have to have every single piece of the puzzle ready to go. So, yeah. Now, another thing you want to note is that, or I want to note, is that in Smithery, it's going to be a lot of stuff. And we're going to cover it today in a demo. So, stay tuned for that. Now, the second update is actually called something, and it's very special and dear to my heart, because this honors a person that I have known since I was a small child. And to be honest, there's one thing I can say about this. This isn't to be mean or cruel or anything like that. This is just in honor of that person. They died 10 years ago, by the way. This update... That I'm talking about is called Project Sikorsky. And as you can guess from the name, it does involve helicopters, specifically ones like the Huey or maybe even the Apache, things like that. This is not just in honor of that person that I'm talking about, but it's also a mainline update that I wanted to get out for a while. The update should be out by the April 1st of this year. And the one before it should be up, out by March. <laughs> it's going to be a short time frame for the second one. But the first one has to have a lot of time. Because Smith 3 takes a while to actually get right. In fact, I actually had to work on it before this update. Because I wanted to get a head start. Anyways, let's get to the next item. Alright, welcome to the demo of Smith 3. Yes, this is a demo. Now, before we get into it, I want to say that we're going to have a certain things we're going to go over, so it's not going to be always everything, and this is subject to change. So, let's get started. First, as you can see, this is your cursor. Whenever you move it or click, it allows you to place things at that very position where the cursor is. Next up, you press B, or you can click this button here to do building in the build menu. So, for example, let's just say I wanted to get out a spawn. As you can see, you can have spawns here. 
And if you want to look at where they are, you just use the camera. And yes, it's based off of free cam, but it's more modular so that you can actually portably use it in a menu like this. And then we'll put down another spawn. Now, when we do spawns, you have to click on them in order to configure them or even work with them. So, for example, I'll call this Polizei Spawn, and then I'll rotate it a bit. Apply changes, clear selection. Take this one, rotate it, and I'll just do apply changes, clear selection. Oh, wait, I forgot. I gotta take this and do Rebel. As you can see here, you can configure certain properties that are important like spawn title, and also when you get to flags, flag title. You click apply changes to save everything for that portion, whether it be a spawn or a regular portion, like I'm going to show you later. And you clear selections just like that. Next up, I want to show you how pillboxes work. Yes, there are spawns for pillboxes when you're dealing with lifeline. And as you can see here, if we go closer, this is the spawn. You can also see that there's a capture switch here in the preview, which shows you some of the possible positions regarding the capture switch. Remember, you have to capture it if you want to win, optionally with the pillbox. And the best way to do that, and the only way to do that, is by actually flipping that switch. So let's get to the uh, capture switch. I'm going to go closer. I can just click on it. Maybe I'll just get closer here. Eh, it's okay. I guess it's there. But you really can't configure it that much because there's not much options, so we're going to skip over that. Next, you'll have vehicles. So to place those down, you go here. You can choose tanks. I prefer to choose, well, the Jeep. And you can take the vehicles and change which one you want. Now for this, I'm going to use the 62K. K being Kanonier, which is German for gunner. This is basically the gunner variant, where there's a gunner seat in the back. And it's one of my favorite variants of the SKW 62 ever made. So we can apply these changes. We can clear the selection. Now if you want to resize it, it is possible. but not on this portion. You can rotate it, of course. You can even move it, which I can show you right here, like that. Apply changes, clear selection. Next up, we're going to show you flags and how they work. So if you want to place down a flag, you go to Capturable Flag, and as you can see here, there's a preview of it. Note, this doesn't change. Now to um, configure it, you go to this flag title. We'll just call this alpha beta flag, I guess. All right, and you can rotate it just like that and apply changes, clear selection. Now we get into what I like to call the good stuff, the regular portions. There are many of them. However, very few actually allow you to add stuff such as effects or even resize. Actually, the better word or term is resize. Because there are portions in here that are mostly just static when it comes to size. So I'm talking about stuff like tall ferns, as you can see here. This is from Emerald Force. We actually use assets from the maps that we remaster to actually make this a more, well, complete building palette, or whatever you call it. And as you can see here, you have certain properties, such as size, which is only usable on the regular portions that you can actually construct and build and shape, like the basic parts, the stretchy parts, things like that. You have color, which is just like the other one, only usable on that, and then you also have position, which is more usable on all the portions. So when you move it, you can do things like this, 
and you can apply the changes, clear the selection, that kind of thing. Now, if I'm going to be honest, we will actually go into more so maybe something like, oh, and I forgot, there's also sound zones. We'll get into that too. But let's try to add a basic part. And let's resize it. So to resize the portion, if this works, we just do this. And as you can see, it resizes itself. Apply the changes. And let's color it. You can also add colors, like I just showed you. You can even change it like this. You can even change the material. I'll go with something like... Let's go with something like diamond plate. And let's look at it. This is my, one of my friend's favorite materials to use, by the way. It's been used for a long time, but I prefer that we use it for this one because it shows you and it's more defined. Now you can also rotate in a different way, but I'll show you that later. Now for the good stuff. This is how you add effects. So you click on this button and you can add effects such as fire. Now when you add fire, it looks like this. Now, we can't do anything yet with it because we have to clear the selection, of course. And as you can see, you can edit it. So basically what I want to show you is this. So I'm going to set this to three. And you can change the colors to something alien-like, like green and cyan pretty much works. You can disable it, you can enable it, you can change the fire size to be something like 4 and it's smaller. Now to apply those changes, you just do like you usually would. Apply changes, clear selection. Now as you can see that is an effect. Now there's more coming such as destruction, and maybe even water effects if we ever get into that. Anyways, let's get to the config. And I'm not talking about on parts. So for config, you have three options. Gameplay, map, edit. I want to show you edit first. As you can see, you have snap in place. If you disable that, you click on this and rotate it. You get a rotator or arc handles. You can rotate it however you want. Just apply changes, clear selection when you're done. Now let's go to the map options. You have lights and map size. I can change the map size to anything I want. 512 studs, 1024 studs, or even the biggest, 2048 studs. All right, now let's look at the gameplay options. Here you can change the title, I'll just call this example map. Now please note it does not save yet. We will add a button in the gameplay options or map options to save your work. However we do not have data store set up right now and we also need to get the play button working. So let's close out of that and if you click on this button you can do playback mode which if I see on the console here it usually starts up in 10 seconds and yep it started okay and if we click on it again it stops the mode in 10 seconds but it doesn't work yet because we still don't have everything set up including the game state which is the most important part to this now for stats this is what you can do with stats click on it and it shows you every single thing here in terms of what's you know actually there. Currently we're using I believe 961 bytes of 4 megabytes used. So there you have it. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. In order to do anything with effects you have to have a basic portion or regular portion like you know these things here Corinthian column above that you may have saw, seen and the nature props so let's try it with a rebel spawn. Can we add effects? Nope. It doesn't work because those are not meant to 
be used with effects. They're for utilitarian purposes. Or in other words, for important stuff such as spawning players and AI alike, spawning flags, or any other thing that needs to be used in the gameplay loop. However, you can spawn effects here, but if you were to add another one, it will show you here that that is not correct. Yep, just like it shows you right there. Anyways, that's the demo, so let's get into the next portion. So, what's actually in store for this, well, mode or tool? Well, here's what's actually in store. We do have plans, like I said before, to add a play button, but we also have plans to add other things too, such as more gameplay features, specifically being able to spawn flags or, or anything else. Also, we have plans for terrain, and not just terrain, but, you know, other things too, such as, you know, how many vehicles you can spawn, things like that, at the maximum. And also AI details as well. So, the other thing I want to talk about that's planned should be the, well, I actually don't know what else is planned other than those things. Except maybe, well, more editing options, of course, such as snap amount for movement and scaling, as well as a, a few other things. But we also got to deal with the fact that we have more planned for not just destruction and effects, but we also have something up coming up called triggers. And what are triggers? Well, triggers are basically like ways to actually do things in game in an event driven manner using a special configuration instance that actually allows things to happen. So, for example, if you're doing a quest, in this, you know, editor, you want a trigger for certain things to happen that will relate to that quest on certain objects, such as picking up maybe a flag or something like that. Now, the other thing we want to talk about is scripting. There's many options out there for this. However, I have to get it prepared because some of them actually use something called Roblox TS, which is TypeScript, but for Roblox. Now, that with that being said, scripting is coming and it will be visual. I'm serious. It will be definitely visual. But yeah, that's what we have planned. So let's move on. In conclusion, I think that this update will be pretty good. And maybe even the next one. I mean, the next one has to be good anyway, because, you know, what I said before. But... This one should be pretty good for what it is because, you know, Smith 3 has a lot of potential. People have actually said that before. But also, I mean, it proves and shows the capabilities of the engine behind this game that I've been working on for almost four years. It'll be four years, I believe, on the 23rd of this month. So, with that being said, let's see what happens. And. My name is Eridos12, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.